This is the video you've all been waiting for, Engine Performance and Scale Delighters in SQL Server 2025 featuring three really awesome demos. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we're continuing our SQL Server 2025 series, and this is a really exciting episode because we are talking about engine performance and scale delighters. These are those demos that usually get the applauses or the people who say, finally, you fixed this problem for me. Uh, so Derek, you have the, the really fun job, hopefully, today of kind of sharing some of those things with us. Uh, but before we get into it, I have Derek here with me from the SQL product group. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you and the team does? Um, sure. Thanks. Thank you. And it's great to be here with you. I was with you what, about a year ago or longer. It's been, been a little while. It's been a while. Um, so I primarily focus, me and my colleague, Dimitri Furman, um, who could not make it today, we focus on what's known as the, the database engine. Um, just really briefly, what the engine consists of are these all these components in here. So I primarily focus on uh, the query optimizer and query execution space. Uh, whereas Dimitri focuses more on storage engine, memory management, metadata, things like that. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. Awesome. Cool. None of these things are complicated, right? Not at all. No, they're all super easy. Anyone can do it. Yeah. Uh, so I know the team has been working really hard, not just the PM, but also the engineering team, uh, on some improvements for SQL Server 2025. Can you tell us about some of those improvements? And, you know, we'd love to see them. Yep. Awesome. That's a great lead in there. Thank you. So from the engine perspective in SQL Server 2025, as you can see, we have a long list of uh, features that we, we've added to the product. Um, I won't drain the slide. Um, all of these are documented on our SQL Server 2025 uh, release notes page. Um, they all go into a little more depth and detail um, if you want to know more about each and every one of these things. But today, what we're going to focus on are three of those components. Um, one is called Optimize Halloween Protection, which has nothing to do with Halloween. It's Darn. just was named that way. Um, the quick story... Behind that is in 1976, some folks at IBM happened to work, be working on uh, the U.S. holiday or event day of Halloween or Hallow's Eve, and they discovered this problem where they were trying to update um, employee salaries. And they ended up, long story short, they ended up updating everyone's salaries and giving everyone more than a 10% raise. They all made more than $25,000 a piece, which was a lot of money in 1976. Um, we fixed that problem. Uh, <laughs> with multiple updates and multiple incorrect updates. The other uh, improvement we'll talk about is uh, we improved some things that happen in batch mode. So specifically, there's some built-in math functions and a date chunk function specifically that we make run very, very fast um, in batch mode. And the last thing we'll talk about is something called, we call optimized SPX cube SQL. As you can see, we like the word optimized a lot. You'll see that in the letter names or features. This is really about taking ad hoc SQL and uh, having it behave like a stored procedure. Meaning um, it will follow the same compilation logic. You won't run into as many bottlenecks as you typically do with ad hoc SQL. Um, so hopefully we can show you and delight you with that feature. Awesome. I'm ready. Let's <laughs> take a look. So with that, well, let's start with optimize uh, all the way protection. So what I'm going to do, Anna, is just I'm going to create a really quick table based on um, worldwide importers sales invoices. So this should take like a second or two. Four, three, here we are. All right. So I'm going to clear my query store, even though not, nothing is in it. I'm first going to turn the feature switch off for this. So optimize Halloween protection is off just to show you the effects of this. One of the things we do whenever uh, we try to um, deal with a Halloween problem, which basically happens when uh, DML is executed and we have to keep track of what roles we've updated. Um, sometimes with, without Halloween protection, we'll end up updating multiple roles multiple times. So one thing I, I did forget to show here, let's actually look at this execution plan. And the, and the way that we protect against updating multiple roles, 
multiple times, is we will uh, introduce what's known as a table spool um, operator. So we read from all the all seventy thousand rows from our table. It goes into a they go that thing gets copied to TempDB as a table spool. We read that again um, to make sure that we're keeping track of which rows we updated and which ones we didn't. This spool operator um, can cause performance problems as we have to read one row, operate on it, go back and read it again, operate on it, and it's all in TempDB. So if I turn on the feature, and then we run the same query again, and in two seconds, okay, so that was a little bit faster. Now with the feature on, there's no more spool operator. Everything is nice and clean, nice and smooth. But if you really want to see how things work, um, I did pre-cook the query. I know what the query hash is already, so I kind of cheat a little bit. So we'll just look in query store and we could see the operations here. So the first insert, um, I did run it twice, but it uh, took about 80 meg of temp DB space. The table wasn't super big. Um, but look how much CPU time we used, 19 seconds of CPU time, and it took six seconds to run all together. With the feature on, we no TempDB space was used at all. Um, we're about two and a half seconds wow. uh, CPU time and about 2.7 seconds um, runtime. So we've cut by more than 50% with just this feature alone. And this was a small table. This problem really comes to light when you have much more data. Wow, right. this is amazing. So as, as a see what's like as a user today, like what do I have to do to get this? I just you just just install SQL Server 2025. This feature is on by by default. It is a controlled by database scope configuration. Um it can be set at the query level. So you can add it as a query hint if you have particular DML statements that you want to make sure optimize Halloween protection is on. I will say as a prerequisite, you'll see in the documentation, we do rely on a feature that we introduced in 2019, actually, the accelerated data, data recovery feature is how we do the magic. So ADR is keeping track of those rows for us, as opposed to us creating a table spool or introducing a sort operator. Mm, cool. Awesome. I love it. I think people are applauding. You just can't hear it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. So the next feature we look at is um, we call it internally the multi-data batch feature, which is not really a, it's not a super cool name. It's really just batch mode <laughs> improvements for, for real-time functions. Um, one thing I'll do uh, just to make things a little more dramatic is all the, most things that run a batch mode um, can take, take advantage of what we call AVX um, instructions in the CPU. So I'm just going to turn on a trace flag um, that we introduced in SQL Server 2022 that allows machines that support uh, AVX 512 instructions. Um, to take advantage of that. Otherwise, we can use the older AVX2 to instruction set. So we'll just verify that that is on. So that trace flag is on. I'm going to free the cache, make some quick query store um, changes. I'm just going to have it um, flush the data a little faster. I do have an X event, so we can just make things. It's already running, slightly more dramatic. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to write a very, very simple query, just, just using the absolute uh, math function. I'll actually execute it a couple of times so that, you know, we'll see, we'll make sure that the query um, runs from the cache. And if I look at query store, I get some information. There's my two execution counts. Um, that's how much CPU time we took. What I'm going to do is just copy this to my super magic formula that I spent all night writing. Um, so I'm going to turn the feature off. It's turned off by a trace flag. I'm going to clear the query store in the procedure cache. So we have a comparison of apples to apples. Same exact query. We'll run it twice. Let's look at the execution time. Copy this off. And then super secret sauce, magic formula. I didn't copy correctly. Copy. There we go. All right, let's see. We'll put it through the machine here and 
Look at that. With the feature on, we have a 71% speed improvement just with the feature on alone. Wow. Um, it's it's pretty pretty dramatic. And some 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 of the mass fun functions you'll get um better results from than others. Um, but it's better than without having the feature. And again, you don't have to do anything except install CPU Server 2025. This again is another feature that's on by default. We're doing work for you. Awesome. That's great. And the scenarios that this is going to apply to folks is like anytime they're using these math functions, is it specific math functions? It, it's all of the math functions today um, and the date trunk function. Um, we have over 500 different built in functions. So we're now that the, uh, the team in Austin, Texas um, has figured out the magic way to fix this stuff, we'll be adding more functions over time. But these are the ones that we're starting out with um, currently. Awesome. Server That's great. That's huge. Okay, cool. Okay. I think you said there was one more thing. One more thing. I'll try to do it super, super quick. Um, so I'm going to use it. IntraWorks database. Um, I'll put in db cabat 160. This feature is called Optimize XQ SQL. Right now it is on. Let me turn it off. So with this demo, I'm also going to show I'm going to use a, a load tool. This is a not your typical O stress tool that I know a lot of folks love. I'm only using this uh, SQL query stress so that we can see um, the results quicker. So what I have is a store procedure called QG query. Um, it's based on a really large, a lot of um, uh, CTEs that are all nested. So it makes the performance not great. What I'm going to do is actually run this just to kind of show you what happens with the store procedure. So while the store procedure is running, I have my different sessions. It's taking uh, a lock, and the lock happens to be a compile lock. So the way it works is when you run a store proc, um, we'll take a lock for the first thread that comes in, um, a compile lock, and everything else waits behind that compile lock. When that Compile lock gets released, um, the rest of the threads start to, to use the, the plan that got cached. They don't have to start recompiling on their own. So this took about 14 seconds um, for this to finish. That's how store procedures operate. Now, if I were to change this just a bit and use an ad hoc SQL, And just so you know, this is the same SQL that's in that store prop. Very, very long, complex SQL. And back. I will free the cache. So we compare the same things. I will execute this. And of course, it's not being happy with me. Only because. I copied something incorrectly. Sienna, this is what you get with live demos. <laughs> hey, at least you know it's live. <laughs> happens no happens doubt. all the time. All right, there we go. All right, so that thing is executing. This will take actually a, a few minutes. So what this query is doing, um, because it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty gnarly, it takes it a few minutes to actually start up. It requests a lot of memory from the engine. And so we end up waiting in what's called a... Um, uh, we're waiting for a memory grant. Um, sometimes it takes a few minutes to actually SQL Server to give you the, the memory that you're asking for. Um, so query is not actually executing yet, even though it says it's executing. But as you can see, it's been 30 seconds or so. So most applications would have timed out by now. But you see, we're now waiting on this thing called a resource for query compile. And all that means all of these sessions are all trying to compile at the same time. And they all just wait and they'll block. And I'm going to stop this because this will take a few minutes. Um, but the point is um, most ad hoc applications or ad hoc SQL that get into this state end up timing out. So the way to resolve that is to turn the uh, optimized FPSQ SQL on. This is not on by default. I'm going to free the cache here. Um, restart the query. And if I take a quick look, 
what should happen is you get the same behavior as we had uh, with stored procedures, where we have one compile lock, uh, the other threads wait behind it. As soon as that first thread releases the compile lock, all the rest of the threads will follow behind um, and just take the um, query plan out of, out of the cache. And this should finish quickly, relatively quickly. So it actually took a couple seconds less um, than with a stored procedure. Wow. Wow, this is pretty powerful. I mean, this is a big change from behavior before. So I guess my question again is is a noob, like how, how do you decide if you need this on for your SQL Server? This, my personal opinion, I think everyone should just have this on by default. Um, it does come with a, a couple of caveats, um, which we did, did document. Um, to make it very effective, we typically um, advise that there, there's a feature in SQL Server called automatic stats updates, where we'll take care of updating your, your statistics for you. Um, stats update can have two modes, synchronous and asynchronous mode. Um, we found that uh, if you have asynchronous stats, meaning uh, your queries don't wait for the stats to be updated, it kind of happens in the background. If you turn that on, and uh, as an extra bonus, you can have those uh, stats updates wait at a low priority. So your queries just keep running. You don't wait for the stats to get updated. If you have those two things on, this feature works uh, most optimally for you. Um, you'll also find um, if you have applications that are written to use things uh, like ORMs, like, like Link or in Hibernate um, or anything that auto-generates ad hoc SQL, they typically will, will send SP execute SQL statements to SQL Server. Which is it? It's sometimes it's very hard to troubleshoot those on on the uh, on the back end fit to say, oh, my application is sending all this ad hoc SQL, and they're all compiling at the same time. It's causing all this contention. Um, people spend lots and lots of time trying to really figure that out. Awesome, cool. I love it. Well, great. Um, so we learned about three awesome features in SQL Server 2025. There's many more from that list that you shared. Uh, any final tips, tricks, feedback, advice for folks as they look at as they look at this? Uh, just install 2025. Uh, do your own benchmarks with with your own workloads and see you know how things improved without you even really having to do anything. Um, part of our mission is to make things run faster without you have to, having to do anything. Um, we do expose uh, how this stuff works under the covers if you want to you know, watch the extended events or we have DMVs, but all that stuff is documented um, if you're interested to see how we're actually making things faster. Awesome, cool. Well, Derek, this was super cool for me. I learned a lot, thought it was pretty cool. I'm sure our viewers did as well. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know uh, what you think. Um, and we'll put some links in the description for you to go learn more about the features you saw as well as the other ones. Uh, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>